Hello everyone. This video is on the Newton Alta assignment for section 12.1 part 3 called ellipses not in standard form. All right, so in this video, I'm going to be going over a preview version of this assignment. So please understand that the questions I see in this video may not be the same questions that you see when you work on the assignment yourself. But the objectives are the same and the structure should be similar. So I'm hoping that watching me do these here help you in some way when you work on the assignment on your own. Now on the assignment page you should be seeing the title, the mastery bar telling you how far along you've gotten, the objectives. Looks like there are two objectives for this assignment. Under the current objective, there should be a question related to that objective. And at the bottom of every question, you should be seeing a feedback button where you can send feedback to Newton if you wish. You will not have this instructor cheat button. It's for instructors only. But you will have a more instruction button. So if you're ever struggling with a topic or a, or a question, try clicking on this and you'll be taken to a page with some reading or videos to study and then you'll be given questions related to that, that particular instruction and working on those questions, completing those questions, will progress you through the assignment. Alright, so the first objective I'm looking at is convert an equation of an ellipse into standard form. Now in sections 12.1 part 1 and part 2, especially in part 2, I wrote out this information. So this is actually from the section 12.1 part 2 video. The standard form for an ellipse centered at some point hk. So it was x minus h squared, some quantity with x squared, you know, divided by a squared, plus y minus k squared divided by b squared equals 1. And a is bigger than b, so if, if the larger denominator is under the x term, you have an ellipse with a major axis that's horizontal, meaning that the, 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 the oval, the ellipse, will be longer horizontally than it will be vertically. Or, if your major axis is vertical, you just switch the a and the b. The b squared will be under the x, and the, the larger denominator, the a squared, will be under the y term. And then if you were ever asked to find the foci, right, you needed to find the value of something called c, which was the distance from the center to a focus, and that was c squared equals a squared minus b squared. You use this relationship between a, b, and c to help you find c and then you could find the foci, which are always on the major axis. Alright, so we're going to be trying to get our equations in this form. Alright, we're going to be starting with an equation that's not in one of these forms. We want to get an equation, you know, write it this way, by completing the square. You're going to see me completing the square on, x squ on, on the x terms and y terms. Right. And the way I'm going to do this is the way I showed you actually back in section the section 12.0 assignment video, if you watched that. On circles, there was an area of that, there were some problems where you were given an equation that wasn't in the standard form for a circle, but then through completing the square, you ended up writing it as an equation for a circle in standard form. We're going to do something very similar here with ellipses, trying to get one of these two forms here. Right. So the first equation I'm given is the following. So on the left side we have 10x squared plus 40x, right? so there are the x terms. We're going to complete the square on these somehow plus 7y squared 
plus 70y. There are the y terms. Again, we'll complete the squares on the y somehow. Plus 145 equals 0. This is actually an equation for an ellipse. Now, it doesn't look like the standard form, that's for sure, but we can get it there through some, some, some manipulation. So I'm going to say right here, we're going to be com completing the square. on the x's and the y's. That's the method. That's the key. Now I'm going to be assuming that you remember how to complete the square. I'm not going into a whole lesson on that. Now if you recall, say I wanted to take these x terms, and you know, we have 10x squared plus 40x. To order, in order to complete the square, the coefficient on the x squared term had to be positive 1, not positive 10. Well, that's an easy fix. Just take the two x terms and you know whatever that lead coefficient is, factor it out. So from just the x terms, I'm going to factor out a 10. So that gives me the following. 10 times the quantity, and when I factor 10 out, I'll have x squared plus 4x, and now the coefficient on the x squared inside the parentheses here is 1. So I can complete the square. I'm going to leave a little space for that, and then close the parentheses. We're going to complete the square on the x's in this set of parentheses. Okay then do something very similar for the y terms. See, the y squared term doesn't have a coefficient of positive 1. It's got a coefficient of 7. Positive 7. So I'm going to, from, from just the y terms, I'm going to factor out that coefficient. Factor out 7. So then this looks like this now. 7 times the quantity and we'd have y squared plus 10y. And now inside the parentheses, I have 1y squared. So I can complete the square. I'm going to leave a little space for that, for that number we're going to add. All right, now the only terms that don't matter to me when I'm completing the square is this constant term here. So I'm going to take away this constant from both sides from the get-go. All right, so minus 145. So I have negative 145 on the right side. All right, now comes the completion of the squares. So on the x's inside this set of parentheses, we have x squared plus 4x. Remember, you take half the, the linear coefficient, which is 2, and then square that, which is positive 4. Now, be careful. Remember, this is an equation. You've got to keep things balanced. Here's the, th here's the mistake that's too often made. People write plus 4 here, and then they're like, oh, i got a plus 4 over here. But no, I, 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 adding 4 in the parentheses, you have to remember what you factored out earlier. If I add 4 in here, what you have now is 10x squared plus 40x, and then the 10 times 4 makes that plus 40. So adding 4 in this parentheses set is really adding 40 to the left side. So I must add 40 to the right side. And again, this is coming from 4 times the 10 that was factored out. So I'm going to add 40 to the, to the right side. All right, same thing for the, the next expression, and the, the y's. I'm going to complete the square on the y's y squared plus 10y, take half of 10, that's 5, square it is 25. So to complete the square on the y terms here, make a perfect square trinomial, I need to add 25. Now, like I said, most people will make the mistake of just writing plus 25 on the other side, but that's not correct. 
if I add 25 in this set of parentheses here, don't forget we factored that 7 out earlier, right? Re if you were to redistribute the 7, I'm not going to, but if you were to, you'd have 7y squared, you'd have the 70y, and then you'd have, you know, 175. 7 times 25. So adding 25 in here is really adding 175. So I'm going to do that to the other side as well, plus 175. All right, that comes from, you know, the 25 times the 7. So you got to keep that number you factored out in mind. All right, now the whole reason for adding these numbers in the parentheses is to make perfect squares. Right? So the next line, have 10 times, and then x squared plus 4x plus 4, that's x plus 2 to the second power. All right, plus, and then the next term, you have 7 times, and then this y squared plus 10y plus 25 is y plus 5, that quantity squared. All right, equals, and, um, you know, 140, uh, 175 and 40, makes 215, and then 215, you know, minus 145 would be 70. So positive 70 over here. So I'm almost done. Right? I'm almost in standard form for an ellipse. See, I've got my quantity with x squared plus some quantity with y squared. All I want now is the number 1 on the other side, and then make it so that the coefficient on the quantities with x and y squared are 1, and you have just denominators, some denominator underneath those. So what I need to do is now just simply divide everything, divide this side and this side by 70. So there's 70, 70 divided by 70 will be 1. And if things work out nicely, hopefully the coefficient of the square term here will go into this evenly. So on the first term I have, you know, x plus 2 squared divided by, and you know, 10 goes into 70 seven times. So that becomes just divided by 7. Plus, and then you have this quantity y plus 5 squared. All right, and then 7, the coefficient of that square, goes into 70 ten times. So that will reduce to having a denominator of 10 equals 1. And there it is. Here's the equation of that ellipse in standard form. And it, you know, I could tell you what the center is. The center would be negative 2, negative 5, right? The x coordinate would be negative 2, the y coordinate would be negative 5 for the center. You know, the vertices, you know, th this would have, you know, the larger denominators under the y term, so it's going to be a an ellipse with a vertical major axis. So I take the square root of 10 and add that and subtract that from the y coordinate of the center. So I have negative 2, comma, and then negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 10. Those will be the two vertices. All right, and then the co-vertices are, you know, you take the square root of 7 and add and subtract that to the x-coordinate of the center. So negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 7, comma, negative 5. Those are the two co-vertices. And then you could find the foci by taking 10 minus 7 is 3, the square root of 3 add and subtract that to the y coordinate of the center, right? So the foci would be at negative 2 and then negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 3, right? All this stuff can be found out from the equation. Now, let's just test it out. Let's just make absolutely certain that these are the same equation, that the equation I got here is the same graph, this has the same graph, the same ellipse as the equation we started with which is what I'll go to the Desmos site for.
right, desmos.com free online graphing calculator and I'll put the first equation they gave me in here it was uh, 10x squared plus 40x plus 7y squared plus 70y plus 145 equals 0 and you see this ellipse showing up right here and I'll even put in the point that I said would be the center so we can very clearly see that it's the center it's at negative 2 negative 5 look at that that's definitely the center of that ellipse And then put, I'll put the other equation in, right? The one we found out we ended up with at the end of all the manipulation after all the completing the square and stuff. X plus two squared divided by seven plus Y plus five squared divided by ten equals one. And look at that, it's right on top of it. Now if I turn it off and on, you'll see it's exactly the same equation, exactly the same ellipse, and tells me that I did a good job there. Right. And then looking through the multiple choice results, the second option is the only one that matches that, that equation that we wrote. All right, and then after you submit an answer, you know, it'll tell you if you're right or wrong, and then give you some sort of answer explanation afterwards. Uh, please read through the answer explanations, right, just to make sure you understand why something was right or wrong, and hopefully you uh, you know, learn from your mistakes for the future. Alright, so given another one of these, again starting off with some equation here that's clearly not in standard form, and then you know, doing some factoring and completing the square and dividing, we can get it to be in that standard form for an ellipse. All right. In this equation, We've got 16x squared plus 32x, then plus 25y squared minus 200y uh, plus 16 equals 0. Right? And you see the x, x terms are next to each other, the y terms are next to each other. So it's pretty set up, pretty well set up in the beginning for me to work with here. So from the from the x terms, I'm going to factor out 16. Then we have times x squared plus 2x. I'm going to leave some space to complete the square in the parentheses there. Plus, and then from the y terms, I'm going to factor out 25. And then you have y squared minus 8y. And again, I'll leave some space, put close the parentheses, we'll complete the square in there. And then the plus 16 I don't need, so I'm going to subtract 16 to the other side. All right, so we have ne equals negative 16. All right, now comes the complete the square part. On the x's, x squared plus 2x, I'd be adding 1 in here to complete the square. Now if I add 1 in here, what I really added was 16 times 1 to this left side, which is just 16, so I need to add 16 to the right side as well to keep it balanced. And then y squared minus 8y, to complete the square on that I would add 16, but again just adding 16 in here, you really added 25 times 16, which would be 400. So I'll be adding 400 to the right side as well. All right, now I got some perfect square trinomials. Right, we have 16 times x squared plus 2x plus 1 is the quantity x plus 1 squared plus 25 times and then y squared minus 8y plus 16 is y minus 4 squared equals and then over here is this 400 and then I would divide everything by 400 to get 1 on that right side. Now 16 goes into 425 times, so this first term becomes x plus 1 squared over 25. Plus, and then 25 goes into 416 times, so this second term becomes y minus 4 
squared over 16. And there we go. Right. And the center, you know, now that I have it in standard form, I should be able to identify all the stuff that I did in sections, you know, 12.1 part 1 and part 2. I'm not going to go into the lesson and all that again. But the center would be a negative 1, 4, right? x negative 1, y positive 4. Um, you know, the value of a would be 5, right? The square root of 25, and I, I would add that and subtract that to the x coordinate for the vertices the ends of the major axis. So, you know, negative 1 plus 5 would be 4, 4, and then negative 1 minus 5 would be negative 6, 4. Then the co-vertices will be up and down. You know, you vertical, you'll have a vertical minor axis. The square root of 16 is 4. Right? The value of b would be 4, and I'd add 4 and subtract 4 from the y-coordinate of the center. So negative 1, 8, negative 1, 0, for the co-vertices. And this is enough to make a graph for sure. Uh, but if you wanted the foci as well, you know, 25 minus 16 is 9, the square root of 9 is 3, and you know the horizontal, it's a horizontal major axis, so I add and subtract 3 to the x coordinate you know, for the foci of the x coordinate of the center. Negative 1 plus 3 would be 2, 4 for one focus. Negative 1 minus 3 would be negative 4, 4 for the other focus. But no, we're not asked for all that. I just want to make sure you understand that you can find them you know, once you have the equation. And again, let's just doubly verify that these two are indeed the same equation. So let's get rid of this stuff here. So I have the equation I was given. Okay, it's 16x squared plus 32x plus 25y squared minus 200y plus 16 equals 0. And you see this ellipse showing up. All right, and we said the center should be at negative 1, 4, you know, after I changed it to standard form. And look at that. That definitely looks like it's in the center of that, that oval shape, that ellipse. And then again, just to make absolutely certain, I'll punch in the equation that we ended up with in standard form was x plus 1 squared divided by 25 uh, plus the quantity y minus 4 squared divided by 16 equals equals 1. And it's right on top of it. And it's the same exact equation, same exact graph. Excellent. Right, and I'll just copy it. Actually, I'll just see if this copies and pastes into the assignment. It does. Excellent. So that's where I'm typing in the answer slot there. Wonderful. All right, moving on. All right, so now we're asked to graph an ellipse where the equation is not given in standard form. So I'm going to be doing the same stuff changing this to standard form and then we'll just move the center and the vertice and one of the vertices and one of the co-vertices to match a point that should be on the ellipse and you know this is again this is going to end up being just like uh, some problems in section 12.1 part 2 so if you go back and watch that one that assignment video you should see how to do how to move these around all right so once again I'll write this equation out we'll we'll change it to standard form the way I've done the last two examples. So I have 9x squared plus 36y squared. Now be careful. You know, I want to get the x terms next to each other, the y terms next to each other. So they're, they're, they're throwing them out of order here. But we'll, we'll move terms around. It's no big deal. And we have plus 36x minus 216y plus 36 equals 0. And again, I'm just focusing on the x terms first. So from the x terms, I'll factor out a 9. So I have 9 times you know x squared, and then 9 times 4 would be 36. So x squared plus 4x. And then I'll leave some space to complete the square inside those parentheses. 
Alright, then we're moving to the, the y terms. I'll double underline those. 36y squared minus 216y. Um, I'm going to factor out 36 from those. And then you'll have y squared um, minus 6y. Right, 6 times 36 is 216. And then I'll leave some space. And then, uh, you know, subtract 36. Just take minus 36 to the other side. All right, now comes the completion of the squares. x squared plus 4x, I'd have to add 4, which is really adding 36. 9 times 4, so I add 36 to the other side. And then in this set of parentheses with the y's, I would add 9 All right, to complete the square. And then 36 times 9, well, 9 times 30 is 270. 9 times 6 is 54. 270 and 54 would be 324. Right, so I add 324 to both sides. Now the first square is you know, 9 times x squared plus 4x plus 4 would be the quantity x plus 2 squared plus and then 36 times y squared minus 6y plus 9 is y minus 3 squared equals, and over here you just have the 36 is going away and you got 324. And then divide everything by 324. Now we saw earlier 9 times 36 is 324. So 9 goes into 324 36 times. So I have x plus 2 squared over 36. And 36 goes into 324 9 times. So you got y minus 3 squared over 9 equals 1. There's the equation in standard form. So once it's in standard form, you should be able to identify some points pretty easily. The center would be at negative 2, 3. And then I would add and subtract 6 to the x-coordinate of the center to get the vertices. Right, that would be a 4, 3, and negative 8, 3. Just adding and subtracting 6 to the x-coordinate. And then I would add and subtract 3 to the y-coordinate to get the co-vertices. So negative 2, 6, and negative 2, 0. Right, adding and subtracting 3 to the y-coordinate of the center. And that should be enough for the graph. Right? That's all we need for the graph. And you can find the foci if you need to. But uh, The center of this will be at negative 2, 3. Just hit it so I make sure you understand. You know, click on it make sure you got the right point. And then you know, I move 6 right and 6 left. So one of the vertices is at 4, 3. Right there, that's 6 to the right, that's one of the vertices. And the co-vertices were 3 units above and below. One of them was at negative 2, 6, and the other one was at negative 2, 0, which I'm seeing down here. And the, this should be good, and you can go to Desmos and test it out, but that should be good after all the work I did. I, I, I know I did it right. Great. And we're doing more, all pretty much the same thing every time. Given some equation that's not in standard form, put it in standard form and you can make a graph. Identify the center of the vertices and co-vertices pretty easily you know, after you have it in standard form. Alright, so this is the same thing. So once again, I'll start with this equation here and we'll put it in standard form. i right, do some factoring, some completing the squares, and then uh, some division. Right, so this equation 25x squared plus 4y squared plus 150x plus 32y plus 189 equals 0. Alright, uh, so looking at the x terms first, 25x squared and 150, you know, if I I'll factor out the 25, and then we'll have x squared plus 6x, and I'll leave some space to complete the square on the x's, plus, and then look at the y terms, factor out a 4 to give me y squared plus 8y, and I'll leave some space, equals, and then subtract 189, get the constant on the other side. Alright, now comes the completion of the squares. For x squared plus 6x, I'd add 9. 
which is really you know adding uh, 175 or 225 sorry mm -hmm. so plus 225 to the other side right 9 times 25 and then y squared plus 8y what I would add there is 16 right? and then 4 times 16 is 64 so I need to add 64 to the other side so I mean that's 289 minus 189 that's 100 on the right side there right? So what we have is 25 times the quantity x plus 3 squared plus 4 times the quantity y plus 4 squared equals 100. Dividing by 100, and you see that this, these coefficients, 25 and 4, you know, those go to, into 100 nicely, so they're being very kind to us again. Uh, 25 goes into 100 four times, so the first term is x plus 3 squared you know, divided by 4. And the second term is you know y plus four squared divided by twenty five and then equals one after dividing everything by a hundred. So there's the equation in standard form. The center will have an x coordinate of negative three, a y coordinate of negative four. For the covertices, right, because this is a smaller number, the covertices we're going to add and subtract two to the x coordinate. Right, so for the covertices. You know, we're going to take the x coordinate of the center and add and subtract 2. So negative 1, negative 4, and negative 5, negative 4 for the covertices. And then for the vertices, right, the, ver the, the major axis would be vertical here, the larger denominator is under the y. I'm going to add and subtract 5. Right, square root of 25 is 5. I'm going to add and subtract 5 to the y coordinate of the center. So I'll have negative 3, 1, and negative 3, negative 9. And this should be enough for the graph. So back here, moving the center to negative 3, negative 4. Make sure it's at the right spot. Great. And then uh, going right and left for the covertices, one of them is at negative 1, which is right there. Negative 1, negative 4, that's perfect. The covertices are perfect. The vertices, though, one of them is at negative 3, 1. Like that. Negative 3, 1. And the other one's at negative 3, negative 9, which you're seeing down there. There's, a, there's the ellipse. And again, if you want to go to Desmos and see, see other pictures, you can if you want. Great. All right, so back to this, writing the equation in standard form, and that's all we're asked to do. Not, you know, we don't have to know what the center is. We don't have the vertices, the co-vertices, the foci, none of that. All right, so same stuff. It's the same, I'm telling you, it's the same thing pretty much every problem in this assignment. So I have 12x squared plus 96x plus 5y squared plus 50y plus 257 equals 0. From the x terms, I'll factor out 12. So we have 12 times, and then x squared plus 8x, and then some space, plus, and then from the y terms, factor out 5. 5 times the quantity y squared plus 10y, leave some space, and then take away the 257. So we have negative 257 on the right. And now I add... Um, you know, for the complete the square part, x squared plus 8x, we'd add 16. All right, now 12 times 16, that's, uh, well, let's see, 12 times 10 is 120, and then 6 times 12 is 72, so that's 192. I'm going to be adding 192 to the other side. And then for the y's, you know, I'm adding 25 to complete the square, and 5 times 25 is 125. Right. Now if you put these together, that is 200, 317 minus 257 would be 60, which just so happens to be 5 times 12. How nice of them again. So 12 times the quantity x plus 4 squared plus 5 times the quantity y plus 5 squared equals 60. 
and then divide everything by 60. We have x plus 4 squared divided by 5, right? 12 goes into 65 times, plus y plus 5 squared divided by 12. Right? 5 goes into 60 12 times equals 1. There's the equation in standard form. And that's what I'll type. And again, if you want to go to Desmos and check it out, you know, I'll leave that to you now. So x plus 4 squared divided by 5 plus the quantity y plus 5 squared divided by 12 equals 1. And they should be the same graph, same ellipse. Wonderful. Alright, let's keep doing this. Just got a few more. So do this one more time, just taking an equation of an ellipse that you know doesn't look like an equation of an ellipse, but we can make it look like one. Right? Put it in standard form. Alright, so I'm just gonna write where I factor out the stuff already. Um, really you just need to factor out the nine from the x terms, because you see the y terms the y squared already has a coefficient of positive 1, so there's nothing to factor out there. Right. So I'd factor out 9 from the x terms, and we had 9 times x squared, and then you know minus 72x, right? Uh, 9 times 8 is 72, so that'd be minus 8x. And then some space is left for completing the square. Plus, and then we already have y squared, 1y squared. No need to factor anything out from the y terms. Plus 10y. And I'll leave some space. And then uh, that positive 160, I'm going to take that away. So we have negative 160 on the right side. Now they're completing the square. First, the x's, I'd add 16. Right, and 9 times 16 is 144, so I'm going to add 144 to both of the other side. Yeah. And then here I'm adding 25. And that's all that needs to be added to the other side, right? I didn't factor anything out. Now that's 169 minus 160 would be 9. Right? And then divide, you know, this is 9 all told. And I would divide everything by 9, which goes into 9 evenly. So the first term just becomes x minus 4 squared divided by 1, plus the next term becomes y plus 5 squared, and I said we divided that by 9, right, equals 1. There's the standard form. I know I kind of said some steps. I jumped over some steps there, but that's what I'm typing. So the quantity x minus 4 squared, and then, you know, divided by 1 if you want to write that, but there's no need to do that, plus the quantity y plus 5 squared divided by 9 equals 1. There's the standard form for uh, that ellipse. All right. And I should just have two more graphs, All right, but still the you know, first step is to get that in standard form, make, making the graph easier. So let's do it. All right, so I'm just going to write out, uh, uh, we have 16x squared and we have 64x. So I pull out 16 and then have x squared plus 4x left over and then leave some space. Plus, and then the y terms, there's a 36y squared and a minus 216y. So I pull 36 out of that and then we have y squared minus 6y and then leave some space. And then there's a negative 188. So I would add 188, giving me positive 188 on the other side. Right. Now for the, uh, the completing the square here, I'd add 4. So times 16, I'd be adding 64 to the other side. And then here, I'm adding 9, uh, which would be, again, I think, I think I did this earlier, 270 plus 54, 324 the other side as well. So that's what, 8, 8, 16, 1, um, 10, 17, 2, and 3, 5, 576, which, wow, lucky us, 
ends up being 36 times 16. Right? 36 times 16, uh, th 36 times 10 is 360, and then times 6 would be 180 plus 36, and then 6 and 11, 17, it's exactly the same. So yeah, we, we're very lucky that the number again over here is just the product of these coefficients of the square of the of the parentheses terms. So this is 16 times you know x plus 2 squared plus 36 times y minus 3 squared equals 576, and then dividing through makes it you know nice like this makes it in standard form. All right, 16 goes into 576 36 times. And then 36 goes into 576 16 times. So you got y minus 3 squared over uh, 16 equals 1. Here's the equation in standard form. The center would be negative 2 for x, 3 for y. And then we'd be adding 6 and negative 6. You know, we'd be adding and subtracting 6 to the x coordinate for the vertices. So adding 6 makes that 4, 3, and subtracting 6 from the x-coordinate makes it negative 8, 3. There are the vertices. And then for the co-vertices, and I'm adding and subtracting 4, the square root of 16, I'm adding and subtracting 4 to the y-coordinate of the center. So negative 2, 7, and negative 2, negative 1. Right. I'm going to plot this stuff. So we said the center was at negative 2, 3. Negative 2, 3, and just click on it, make sure I'm in the right spot. Good. One of the vertices was at 4, 3. Right, there's 4, 3, and the other, and one of the co-vertices is at negative 2, 7. Right, there we go. So these two, and again, you can check it out by you know graphing with Desmos, or plug these points in. These points that are on the ellipse should satisfy the equation. If you plugged in negative 2 for x and 7 for y in this equation they gave us, it would make it true. If you plugged in 4 for x and 3 for y in this equation that we were given, it would also make it true. And I leave that to you. But it should work. Alright, All right, and I should have just one more of these based on my progress. Alright, um, yeah, so I'll write this one out, change it to standard form, make the graph, right. just like the others. So there's only the one x squared term, that's it. That square is already completed, there's no other x term. But the y terms, you know, I got a factor out of 9. There was 9y squared and 72y. So it would be 9 pulled out and y squared plus 8y. And then leave some space. And then the constant on the left was 135. So I'm going to subtract 135, get negative 135 on the right. And then uh, there's nothing to do to the x terms. It's already a square. It's just the y terms. And I would add 16 here. 9 times 16 is 144. So I'm adding 144 to the other side which would give me 9, and then divide by 9. So we have x squared divided by 9, plus, and then y plus 4 squared, divided by 1 equals 1. Right, there's the standard form. Uh, the center would be at the point 0 for x, negative 4 for y. You'd be adding 3 and subtracting 3 to the x coordinate for the vertices. So plus or minus 3, comma, negative 4, 3, negative 4, negative 3, negative 4 are the vertices. And then for the co-vertices, I'd be adding and subtracting 1 to the y-coordinate of the center. So 0, negative 5, 0, negative 3. And then those, those should pop up in my graph. So moving the center to 0, negative 4. All right. One of the vertices was at 3, negative 4, and the other one's at negative 3, negative 4, and then one of the co-vertices is at 0, uh, negative 3, and 0, negative 5 right there. So, that graph. Great. Alright, but you notice I did the same thing every time, pretty much, for all these, to take, a, take an equation in standard, that's not in standard form, put it in standard form, and then for the graph ones, you know, once it's in standard form, you should 
based on your work from section you know 12.1 part 1 and part 2 you should be able to identify the center the vertices and covertices pretty easily after you get the equation in standard form and that should be it for this preview version of this assignment so remember like I said at the top of the video uh, the questions I saw here may not be the same questions that you see when you work on the assignment yourself but the objectives are the same the structure should be similar so I'm hoping that watching me do these here helps you out in some way when you work on the assignment on your own and thank you very much for watching